Welcome to Sandwich Chamber Presents, a program that showcases the members of the Sandwich Chamber of Commerce. My name is Joe Arno, I am the host, and to, we are here with Michael Magier from the Glass Studio on Cape Cod. Thank you, Joe. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. It's great to have you on this program. I've been coming by your store for many years. I'm honored. It's, um, it's, it was a great opportunity when you asked, uh, jumped at it. So. Um, Tell us about the studio. We, uh, actually, you start with the address. You're right on 6A. Yeah, I'm right on number. 6A in East Sandwich, 470 Route 6A, East Sandwich. Um, this is actually our 20th year. So throughout the summer, we're going to have several events and, and happenings to celebrate our 20 years in Sandwich. It's, it's gone by so quick. Um, it's just a great place. Uh, you know, um, it kind of funny, a sandwich kind of picked me. When I moved, when I came to the Cape, I was living in Japan. I came to the Cape, I had two weeks to find a location to build the studio. And in those two weeks, of course, I did a lot of homework. I had a whole stack of, you know, potential properties, everywhere, everywhere from Wellfleet to Falmouth, basically. But I didn't have anything in sandwich, and it was like, oh, that's the glass town. That's I don't right. want to be the glass artist to set up a glass studio. You know, there's my my is it my left side or my right side thinking? I don't know, but certainly I didn't want to be the guy to build a glass studio in sandwich. And out of necessity, you know, the last four days we had found nothing really positively good, to, you know, good spot to build a studio. And um, I actually had got a little food poisoning. I was sick. I was in a hotel at the you know Sandwich Motor Lodge. You know, just had to crash and like recuperate. Couldn't go very far, so I said, "Okay, I'm here in Sandwich. I'll look." I had, actually I took a friend to Boston, Logan. I was coming home, and I'm like, "Pull over the second exit, you know, <laughs> find a hotel and crash." And recovering, I said, "Okay, let me look in Sandwich." And sure enough, this house was uh, perfect. Um, so it's your house. It's my it's house your studio, mm -hmm. but where you showcase your, pro your products. Yeah, gallery and it's also studio. your where you make it. Yes. Right. So we um. It was perfect. There was a garage, and then there was a wall here in, a, in the garage wall, so it was kind of an L shape. So two more walls and a roof made a nice, tall ceiling, concrete floor studio. Sure. So I put a little addition on. And just to just to clarify, where we're standing right now is actually at, at Momo's Food Emporium. Yes. On Six A, further up or further down, mm -hmm. which way you're going? Yeah, but a mile and east of my studio. And the reason the reason we're here is that you have some of your products mm -hmm. on showcase. Not just some products, Joe. This is kind of a, a retrospective of my work. I mean, um, there's a few new pieces, but a lot of this work, some of it goes back over 20 years. Okay. Even before I moved here, I brought it with me. Um, and it was, it's just so interesting to see all of this work in one room, you know, all the, it's all this range of work that we don't really show in my gallery. No, and, and it was a surprise to me to come in here and see such different looking product. Um, pieces, mm -hmm. call them, not products, pieces. Yeah, that's, I've gotten a lot more, of that. People more, didn't think I did this kind no, of work. No, no, no. <laughs> We're incorporating stone and, mm -hmm. and, and metals and, mm -hmm. and into the glass. It's very unique. Very well, unique. I got my Bachelor of Fine Arts in sculpture and ceramics, actually, not glass. Uh, so I you know, have a lot of work in sculpture as well as glass, but it was my junior year of art school that I took off and I went to Japan to study wood fire kilns in a little town called Seto, right outside Nagoya, central Japan. And that was 1979 to 1980. So I came back to my university after a year of absence. And um, actually, I went from Tokyo to Rome and spent the summer in Italy carving marble. Wow. So that was more sculpture you know, influencing my work. And you'll see a couple pieces here with limestone, carved limestone, and concrete as well. So I came back after a year of absence and really gung-ho on sculpture, really gung-ho on ceramics. And the ceramics department had built a glass, little glass studio in the kiln room. So there it was, and it was really basically a, just a bunch of potters blowing glass with no instruction. Right. But it was just the love of the material and the, and the excitement of it that was, it was unstoppable. So your influence from Japan and seeing the glass, we, you, you said you made a, built a kiln in, in Japan, and is that? Well, I worked in a, in a ceramic studio. Oh, the ceramics. We, it that was that. a wood fire. You know, it was a studio that dealt mostly in wood fire kilns. Okay. And you know, the ancient art of ceramics in Japan is, is so. When phenomenal. did you start getting more into the glass, and did you get formal training in that? Well, I came back, and like I said, it was I extended my education by a year, an undergraduate, um, and just fell in love with glass. So I went out to California for graduate study at the California College of Arts and Crafts in Oakland. I believe now it's California College of Arts. 
Um, spent a year there studying with Marvin Leposky, a very famous figure in the glass studio movement. Um, but I you know, wanted to um, explore glass. I got a show in Japan. I went to Japan for two months, ended up staying two years. Wow. Having three shows, worked in a glass factory for a whole year, you know, real industrial, <laughs> big glass factory. Very different than art school. And it was just, it was very interesting. I wanted to finish my master's, so I applied to Tulane University in New Orleans, where I went down there and I finished my MFA in glass. Um, my good friend Shoji Asahara, who's my partner here in this studio, asked me to build a glass studio in Yokohama, Japan. So I went back to Japan and spent a year and a half, built the studio, just had it up and running, and then spent another year and a half in Hokkaido. Sapporo, the city of Sapporo, in an art park, the Gage to Nomori Art Park, and ran a glass studio there before coming here to build this studio. Wow. Wow. So, um, like I said, Sandwich kind of found me right. in a way because uh, I kind of resisted. I looked in Well, Wellfleet was a really nice location, and it was almost that would have been probably where we would have set up. But like I said. The last four days of my trip here, I ended up looking in Sandwich and found this place. Well, we're glad you found it. And it was ideal. And then I'm like, well, this is where I should have been in the beginning. Because right. people right. know glass and sandwich. Right. And to, you know, people have an appreciation for glass and sandwich. And, and I had two children. My uh, daughter was four. My son was two when we moved here. And Sandwich was a, just an excellent place for them to, uh, to go through school and, and to be raised. It was really a very, very educational and very nice. I mean. We're very pleased. And you have some very unique products that, uh, that with the around the glass sphere, the beach. What, what the ocean that? ball. The ocean yeah, ball. that's probably ocean our ball. number that's one item we have. It's very popular. Um, when I move, I learned this these bubble techniques. You can see it kind of bubbles here, and I'll put bubbles here. A lot of the pieces will have bubbles in them. Uh, it's a technique I learned in Japan. And uh, it's very simple where you, you start with a small bubble and someone will blow another bubble on a pipe and you wrap your bubble with this additional bubble. Um, I learned that in Japan. So when I came here, I kind of saw the water in the bay my first week or so. And where the seaweed was, was very dark, kind of cobalt looking. And then where the sand was, it was very green. So on a whim, I said, okay, let me put some green and blue together. It's like half and half and I made a vase or something, I probably forgot what it was. And it was like, oh, you know, this looks neat. It looks like the ocean. Well, 20 years later, <laughs> it's really become our signature work and it's called the, uh, the Cape Cod Sea Bubble Series. And uh, the ocean ball just came about probably several years, several years after we started the series. People really love it, you know? And sure. it's funny, you know, you have like 10 great or 100 great ideas, let's say. And you cannot really choose which one is great. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's what the, the people want. The people want, right. And I love making this one item and it doesn't sell. Right. So it's not that much fun to, you know, when you got 10 of them on the shelf and 10 in stock, it's not really fun making them anymore right. when they're sitting there, right. you know. Um, there's reality of the gas and the glass and the, and the and you know the employees and the, everything, everything from taxes to bills. You know, and you and the natural make, gas bill must be pretty. Yeah, massive. it's up there. Yeah. The furnace runs 24/7. Uh, when we're working, it's about 2,300 degrees. When I'm not working, it'll go down to about 1,900. When I'm not, and you couldn't work glass out of a 1,900 degree furnace. It'd be very stiff. Well, my furnace. Every furnace is going to be a little different. So when you make a statement like that, it's always going to be someone's going to say, "Oh." I use 1900 degrees, right. but so it's always relative to what you're doing. But um, so it runs 24/7. It's, it's it's a beast. Yeah, it's yeah. a beast of burden. And you're way. producing five days a week, six days a week, three days. Um, we blow long. four days a week, cool. Thursday through Sunday, 10 to 5, and then uh, the other days, Wednesday's kind of our cold shop day. Well, we'll do cutting and grinding. Like this lip has been cut and polished, or the bottom might need to might need to be cut and polished to sit right. So that's our usually Wednesday routine, and then Monday and Tuesday are mostly dealt with maintenance and just keeping up everything and um, and doing sculpture, drawing and welding. Um, you know, I love doing the versity of a lot of different things. So this is part of our cut sea bubble series, and even though it looks very red, when it cools, it'll be half blue and half emerald. And what it is is we call it frit in this bowl. We mix it. Half and half, 50-50. Um, Frit comes in four sizes. 
very fine, very coarse. And we say we gather the glass out of the furnace. So I pick a gather of glass. And that encapsulates that color in between two layers of glass. And this is where I'm going to center that hot gather around my very first bubble. Now basically what I have to do is let this cool just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to try to even out the temperature. The furnace is running about 2300 degrees. And that's been running for 20 years now. Um, which is really amazing because I'm used to furnaces lasting between 3 and 5 years before you have to rebuild them. But uh, unless it's broken, I'm not going to fix it. But it is about time after 20 years. Um, I might be defeating my, my uh, cost of running it versus losing too much heat. What I have is my assistant Andrew here is bench blowing for me. It's a typical Venetian Italian technique where they would do things very quickly. This, of course, I could blow like this and then come back and shape it and blow. But you have, you have someone to bench blow for you. It's very quick, and I'm, I'm able to shake the piece. Glass cools so quickly, so you, sometimes you have seconds of an increment to make something. So I can make a little jack. These are called jacks. And I'm jacking down. You see a little neck here. And if I didn't do this, it would not come off of this blowpipe very effectively. And this is what we call a, a mini ocean ball. And what we're going to do now is we'll take it off of this. So by taking a pair of scissors, I can gently crease that jack line. I don't know if you can see that. But I'm kind of almost like scoring it with a, you know, blast cutter. Still a little hot. We can actually cut it. So what we have to do now we have to put some what we call in the kneeling oven, which is holding at 900 degrees. If we didn't put them in there, they wouldn't crack. They would explode be under so much stress. So these pieces that we're looking at that have the, the yeah. multimedia, I'll call it, the different mm -hmm. types of components, mm -hmm. um, is that something that you continually to do like when you have the time? Yeah. When oh, yeah, I've got several pieces in the works right now. Yeah. Uh, five, you know, one thing about the Cape and being the Northeast is that you're limited to where you can get outside. You can do a lot of things in, indoors, like glass blowing, it's ideal, you know. But when you start doing sculpture with steel, you want to be outside with welding and grinding. So you're kind of limited on the environment or the weather, you know. So a lot of my sculpture makings put on hold throughout the winter. And I'll do design work and pre-work. And then when spring hits and summer hits, I can get outside. So I've got a whole series of um, benches I'm working on right now. Uh, stone. Oh, stone. Stone, oh, stone, stone, and glass, and, and of course light. They're all, all going to light up. So I have one little one out here in front of Momo's, and I've got a couple at my studio site too. But um, you know, to have glass lit up, and there's none here, but there's some on the other side of the room there, um, is so exciting. Because when I work glass, it's 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 emitting light. You know, in the old days in the ceramics, we turn off the lights and just play with this like glowing orb you know it was in the dark room you walk over to your bench and your bench would light up you right. could see everything you know it was like a flashlight walking around the room but you know it, it's emitting this energy this light and then you cool it in an annealing oven it can be anywhere from a day to weeks to months depends how thick to it, cool it down to how thick it is so yeah. some some of these thicker pieces that you have yeah here. these take about two weeks to cool because of the thickness of the base something like this can be cooled overnight it's not how big it is, it's how thick it is. Right. Something can be three foot diameter and you know that thick and it can be cooled in three hours. Right. Something this large, let's say solid, is gonna take, I would guesstimate, maybe six months. Wow, so that's a project you yeah. really have to be devoted to. Corning Glass Museums, I believe it was in the 1930s, made a mirror to, to a telescope. It took a year and a half for that mirror to cool, the piece of glass. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it can be 
Um, to make small things, it can go really quick and easy. When you start dealing with larger components, it becomes a whole different scenario. It's really very complicated. And, you know, I never took a physics course or a chemistry course. Um, so when you become a glass artist, you just accumulate these little bits of knowledge and you end up putting it all together in the end. So how do you determine the thickness? It's all I by mean, a graph. The, the time. Oh, it's on it. So yeah, it I mean, on how there's thick it books is. and there's you can read about it, and it's very it's very systematic. There's no okay. guesswork. No good. If, you, if you're making something, it can't be after a year and a half. You can't just say, okay, now it's ready, <laughs> and then boss, <laughs> you got to crack exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it has to be. I mean, that's when things go askew in my studio. I don't feel too bad because Corning first prototype did break and okay. crack. You know. And, I can just see a hundred engineers going, hmm, <laughs> whoops, <Yeah. laughs> and they did get a good one. They made, and then they had to sh railroad it across America to California wow. for, the, for the observatory. So um, it is kind of accumulation. You have to be a little bit of a chemist, a little bit of an engineer, a little bit of a scientist when you do a glass studio. And it's, um, you learn a lot of it in school and a lot of experiments. And I tell young people, the best knowledge you can do to get is to get into a studio and get your hands dirty. It's one thing to look at it on YouTube. It's one thing to read about it. But when you actually do it, it's, it makes so much more sense. So for somebody that's young and wants to get into it, how, how do they? Is it, is it it's art really school difficult. or is it, trying it to, is it an apprenticeship? How, how yeah. How well, my main assistant, Billy Mayer, who's really becoming a well-accomplished glass artist in his own right, is um, he came to me as an apprentice and he took an apprenticeship. And I've got a young apprentice now working with me. It was through the Cape Museum of Fine Arts apprentice program. He was a high school student last year. And it was an eight week program. And I think we're now we're at 18 months. Nice, nice. <laughs> So he stuck so with me. So he has me. the talent, he has so, the ambition. Yes, and uh, I have another young assistant, Andrew. Um, is I should give him all credit. Andrew Hicks is my other assistant. He's been with me a little over two years. And Spencer Warner is my young apprentice, and he's been with me about 18 months. Um, and they're learning it. They're learning it from experience. Unfortunately, there is no place on the Cape where you can study glass. Right. Um, there are a couple places up in Boston, NOCA, North Cambridge Studio, uh, Diablo are two places I know right now that offer glass blowing classes. They offer beginning courses, offer weekend courses. Um, I'm in the process now of actually trying to find a location in Sandwich or the Cape to build a glass school. So that's one of my goals actually is to try to promote the glass art and to build a glass studio here on the Cape. I think it'd, great. It'd, be, it'd be a win-win. I mean, it'd be a perfect area to do it. It's very fitting. Yeah. Especially maybe in Sandwich. So yeah, we got things in the works, right. you know, we got my fingers crossed. Right. We'll see. Um, it's fun. I love to teach and uh, I love to make stuff. So. One of the things you had mentioned, you had mentioned uh, that you do with the, the small pieces, and you, you're wearing a piece. Oh yeah, what, little, Tell us about that process. This is called a uh, a fused piece of glass. It's a little jewelry, a little pin, and it's very simple. I call it almost like making cookies. You know, you break up or you cut up little pieces of glass, and you layer, you put them on top of each other. You put them in a kiln, uh, and you turn on the kiln, and you actually get it up so hot that it fuses the glass together which is anywhere from 1450 to 1850, depends on the kiln. And when you see it's ready, if you, sometimes you want it like kind of rough and bumpy, you stop it, you just turn off the kiln, air it out a little bit, and then anneal it and cool it slowly. Uh, or you want it very flat. And glass is almost like a water when it gets hot. Sure. There's a resistance, and it'll actually pull together like a bead of water. And with all these different layers and all these protrusions, will end up into one smooth drop if you get it hot enough. And then you, if you like that look, you stop the kiln um, and you go, you know, and then you cool it. Um, it's very accessible. It's very easy. It's on and off. Nothing like you know a hot glass studio sure. where it's um, it takes constant monitoring. So that's something that um, I built a last year. I built a large slumping oven to do some new work. Um, and I, everything I made, I've sold, so I have nothing here to show you. But it's uh, fusing glass, and I'm making panels anywhere from 24 inches to 33 inches wide uh, where I'm doing landscapes and, and things where I'm bringing all my components, all my glass making components that I've made in little pieces I'll bring together and, and kind of design a landscape is what I'm thinking. Nice. So um, I'm just starting that this spring, so something different. The other thing that you do that's different that 
people can see in the wintertime around the holidays are your giants. Oh yeah, the giants of Sandwich. Yes, why don't you tell us about that? Gosh, um, I think that started about 15 years ago. I made a large, I call them giants because they're 12 they to 20 giant. feet tall. Yeah, yeah. And I made a large glass blower outside for my studio and uh, just for a Christmas decoration, you know. And it was fun. I thought, okay, that's kind of nice. And right up, you know, three doors up is the baseball card, you know, shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought, wow, wouldn't that be nice to build, you know, make a baseball card giant? And then from that, it just, okay, let me do Titcom's bookstore. So, um, and they just started to grow, you know, and gosh, I think of, um, I'm at about 30 of them now. Wow. In the town. And I've got seven more this year uh, to work on. And there's actually a waiting list now, we've, you know, um, before I can, you know, That's finish fantastic. them this year. So they're really fun. And they're, they're more like folk art than anything else, you know. They're, they're large stick figures, very simple, very easy to make. Um, but when you bring them all together and at one you know in the winter when they're all lit up it becomes it's amazing a, a total event it and is. it's kind of gotten much bigger than i ever anticipated i didn't realize there were 30 out there yeah i, I need a map of, of where someday i think are. yeah somebody nice. wants to make a map and like you know kind of treasure hunt <laughs> yeah but they're fun they're really fun and i you know it's a lot of support from people that own them they kind of adopt them and they uh they do a lot of work to light them and to keep them up and the maintenance and uh but you know, on a dark, dreary December or January day, to drive down 6A and to see these things lit up is, is it really, it's, it's nice. And I never thought it would become this, this popular or this big. It was something that just, you start to get the ball rolling and then all of a sudden before you know it, it's a snowball <laughs> and you're, hang, you're hanging on. Yeah, my, my, my hope is that on first night, our first, first night coming up. Yes. This December 31st, that there'll be a, a big part of that program because yeah. they are definitely something people should seek out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's going to be very exciting to have First Night in Sandwich. Um, can't wait. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be good. I've got a couple things uh, that I'm working on with that committee as well. Oh, great. Look yeah. forward to seeing what yeah. that is. And the other thing you're working on um, for the Chamber is some outdoor planning for the new building that's coming up. Right. The Tell Chamber's in, under this huge, um, big campaign to raise enough money to build a visitor center here in Sandwich. And this is really important because um, it really promotes the beautiful history of Sandwich. To have an actual location where a person can come and learn about the town, learn about the people, uh, learn about what we have to offer, and also have be able to teach courses in this center, to teach art courses or, or history courses or natural courses about the natural environment. It's gonna be real exciting. And in front of the um, visitor center, they've um, kind of staked out an area to do a landscape pond with rocks and fish and a little waterfall. So um, I love doing work like that. I love doing the work of, of the, the rocks and, and getting the fish and everything. It's really, it's really exciting. And with the boardwalk. To, and the boardwalk is going to go over the board. over the, the river, the stream. I'm going to make. So that's another project that's going to be really fun and. Um, I hope a lot of people in the town and across the Cape are going to get, you know, interested and involved in that project because I think it's going to help a lot of people and it's going to promote, you know, especially the town. And it's well, you know, it's well overdue. You know, we have a little visitor center that's like 10 by 10, I think. So, yes, yes. yeah. So, uh, and we got great people on the board that are working really diligently to make this happen. So. Um, I don't think it's not a matter of if it's going to be when, when it's going to happen. Absolutely. Yeah. And we hope to break crown this fall. So it's on, it's on the fast forward. That's great. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that I, I, I noticed too, you're not just here at Momo's, but I was down at the Brush studio. Yes. And I, I noticed your, your lamps mm -hmm. uh, were, were hanging. It's, I thought that was a great spot for them. It's and nice uh, to see your stuff. Yeah, Chris around. is really good, really. She's got a great talent in painting and uh, it all, I just put up pieces on there temporarily for a chamber event uh, that we had down there uh, for the designers, I guess, had an open house sort of. So um, we kind of left them there. But I've also have work at the River Street, uh, River Stu I'm sorry, River Studio Gallery, right there on okay. River Street with Naomi and uh, Greg. There's, they have a beautiful little gallery there and they also, rep uh, excuse me, they also represent me. Um, there as well. Nice. And are you elsewhere on the Cape or off Cape? Do you have? Um, not really. We've really um, 
pretty much narrowed into our own studio. We have a few shops. There's a couple galleries around the Cape that we deal. The Daniel Webster is a really good supporter of my work. They have several shops. They, they sell my glassware. Uh, Left Bank Gallery in Orleans uh, has a very good collection of my work. They really support me as well. And there's several others too. So right. not only here in Sandwich, you can find my work um, on, around the Cape. Do you sell online? Yeah, we have, we're just starting that up last year that we have um, a little catalog online that you can actually purchase pieces from. So and we're, we're giving that a shot. <laughs> What's your website? It's the glass studio on Cape Cod.com. I'm sorry, not the, just glass studio on Cape Cod.com. Great, great. So I know a lot of a lot of my friends when they're getting married, they often get gifts from, mm -hmm. from you and that the blue glass is something that definitely says Cape Thank Cod you. and I think that's something that when they come through people are driving down six mm -hmm. A. A, well, my wife Keiko, this has been kind of a real family, you know, studio. My wife Keiko runs the whole gallery, and what we do is we have a free engraving, which people love, yes. you know. So we'll engrave the glass with either the bride and the groom's name or the anniversary date or a birth date, and that kind of makes it a little bit special, too. It kind of, um, it's a very simple engraving, but uh, it really kind of customizes the work, and it makes it a little more special for the people. So we have glass granite, Metal, steel, metals, <laughs> what's next? Gosh, I don't Ponds, know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the pond, I just love doing it. I built the, uh, last summer in July, I put a little koi pond, a little fish pond in front of my uh, studio. And, uh, you know, it's just so much fun to work. I love working outside. Um, when I mean, you start dealing with large stones, they're, those are the easiest because you just take this to move them. Okay, over there, <laughs> over there. <laughs> it's the little ones that like break your back when you gotta pick them up, but um, it's a lot of fun, you know. And uh, it's just accumulation of everything. You know, I think it's life, you know. You, you, uh, I've been very fortunate to be able to um, express myself in a lot of different ways. And, um, you know, it's, it's all starting. Every year is a new year, so I'm really excited. Well, um, thanks for joining us, Michael. Well, thank you. And look for Michael Go. on 6A. Glass Studio on Cape Cod, glassstudioncapecod.com. Check out his projects, and we look forward to see what comes next. Thank you very much. It's Thank been a pleasure to be here. Thanks for joining us on Sandwich Chamber Presents. You can watch us online at sandwichtv.org. You can check us out on YouTube or Facebook. Thank you. Great.